Now we've all seen this car quite a few times before. Last Auto Expo we brought you a story when it was codenamed Kite 5. Well, now it is the Tata Tigo and it's all set for launch. It is based off the Tiago platform and you can be forgiven for thinking that it looks a lot like the Tiago because it is up to the B pillar, save a few changes. Well, the nose is identical except for the smoke projector headlamps and the mildly different grille design. There are the split tail lamps that also share a hexagonal pattern from the grille. While the diesel variant gets the same 14-inch wheels, the petrol that you're seeing now gets 15-inch rims. Now the big changes are when you view it around the side. Of course, for one, there is the wheelbase that's longer. And of course, here's where the Tigor sets out to be different from other conventional compact sedans that really take a boot and paste it onto a hatchback platform. This is where it carves out its own path. Here's where it becomes really stylish with this coupe-like roofline that just sort of melds into the rear. And of course, Tata designers have kept in mind the attributes of Tata cars, keeping in mind the extra headroom that one always has on the inside. They've sort of chamfered out this neat little edge over here, opening up more space on the inside. And coming round to the back, the boot as well has its own unique features. Let's take a look. The boot has hydraulic struts, which Tata like to call the four-bar link, as opposed to the conventional hinges. This has allowed them to widen the opening and get a lot more room inside the boot. It's a 490-litre boot, which is the largest amongst the sub-4-metre sedans. However, it must be mentioned that the opening of the boot is a little cumbersome, because there is no button on the boot lid. You have to press a button on the central console and that too can only be done when the ignition is on. We learned later that the follow me home lamp button on the key doubles up as a boot release, but how would one ever know that? On the inside too, the layout is almost identical to the Tiago. It's a neat and simple layout, but it's still got some really nice touches that make it feel quite premium and nice. There's this textured finish on top of the dashboard which gives it a sort of richer feel. Lots of chrome garnishing around, body coloured encasings around the air vents. The lower plastics are the only thing that let it down a bit because they're a bit hard. We also noticed the shut lines on the glove box did not quite match up and small fit and finish issues like this still remain. But otherwise, you've got this piano glossy black around the central console that's used quite liberally. There's lots of storage spaces, so it's a practical cabin too. And of course, you have the touchscreen infotainment connect next system that gives you a lot of options as well. The touchscreen differentiates it from the Tiago. But the touch system is slow to react and one finds themselves using the rotary dials much more to flip through the applications. There is a reverse camera and whilst that works well, overall the screen is not bright enough. So in the day, the glare makes all the in-application screens quite unreadable. For the rest, the layout is similar to the Tiago. And the only differences are in the piano glossy black used on the spokes of the steering and the fabric used in the door pads. The cabin remains a practical one with ample storage spaces all around. Let's take a look at what the Tigor offers in terms of features. The Tigor shares its engines with the Tiago with identical torque and power figures. The petrol produces the same 85 HP and 114 Nm which is similar to the Swift Desire and the Hyundai Accent. But the diesel which produces 70 HP and 140 Nm of torque seems underpowered in its segment. We drove the petrol engine to begin with. Now you'll find it really easy to settle into a good driving position in the Tigor. The seat itself is comfortable, the seat height adjusts, steering height adjusts, glass area is nice and big so visibility is good. Everything falls to hand easily, so spending long hours driving this car will be hours easily spent. What else is really good if you're going to spend a long time in this car is the music system. It's got a really great set of speakers. 
As you can hear, that's really quite nice for a car of this size. So, you know, if you're cutting that daily grind, spending long hours in traffic, the Tigo will make a good companion. Driving through city traffic and out on some open roads to test the cars, we found that the petrol engine coped well. This petrol engine feels smoother and nicer than it did in the Tiago. It's got this nice linear power delivery. Dabs on the throttle draw good responses and you can amble around pretty easily too without having to work the gears too much. Overtakes come easily as well. It pulls cleanly. And honestly, it really makes driving easy, whether you're cutting through city traffic or whether you're cruising out on a highway. Though delivery is consistent and you never lack for power, it doesn't have the zing of its other competitors. But then, it's a heavy car at 1,062 kg. We also tested the diesel engine. The diesel engine is not punchy or, you know, doesn't have that kick of a turbo diesel, but it's got a nice linear acceleration, it's got good enough power. The power is really between two and four and a half thousand RPM. And if you drop below that mark while you're cruising, then you will have to work the gears to make overtakes. That's not necessarily a bad thing because the gearbox, though not very precise, is light and easy to use and the clutch is light enough as well. Cutting through city traffic, the Tigor, because of its shorter gearing compared to the Tiago, accelerates a little more smartly. And it's only at higher speeds and highway overtakes that it falls short, where you have to shift down to get a move on. The diesel doesn't really have a strong top end, and when you push it, it feels overworked and sounds it too. Soon enough, we found a patch where we could also check the Tigor's handling capabilities around a few corners. You can carry a fair amount of speed into corners with the Tigor. It's actually quite stable and planted. And even the steering wheel, though it's light and easy in the city, it's got a nice heft when you're cornering at slightly higher speeds. Uh, it gives you a good sense of security. In fact, there is a fair amount of roll when you corner at higher speeds, but you don't really feel it inside the car. I too only realized it when I was checking the visuals on our camera. From behind the wheel, I felt secure, whether it was around corners or whether it was cruising down the highway. In fact, the impressive part of the Tigor was the balance between the ride and handling, which I realized when I got into the back seat. Well, the back seat of the Tigo is like every Tata back seat. It does have a good amount of room. They've scooped out the back of the front seat to add more leg room here, which is quite nice. Of course, I showed you earlier how the roof had been done so that there would be more headroom opening. There's a lot of it. There is a central armrest as well, and it does have some cup holders too. Though the seat cushioning is comfortable, the seat back has a larger degree of recline than one would like but that was done to ensure there was adequate headroom. And even the seat base itself is really nice and wide. What they've done is extended the backrest from door to door so you can use the entire width of the seat and fit three passengers in quite comfortably. We also found a patch of road to give us a good sense of ride quality. Now we're going over a really bad section of road, it's quite unevenly surfaced, there are potholes and it's great for testing ride quality, which I have to say is quite exceptional because what I see on the surface of the road is really not filtering in through to me as a passenger in the back seat. It's extremely pliant and comfortable and I'm not feeling this bad section of road at all. Overall though, the Tigor was not really exciting to drive, it felt comfortable and easy. And after spending a while with it, we realized that we quite liked it, despite its shortcomings.
Tata Motors is a company on the move. They've been putting out good products one after the other ever since the Zest. But they didn't see a good amount of success right up until the Tiago. Well, the Tiago has brought back a huge amount of consumer confidence into the brand and the Tigor is looking to build on that. Well, we've driven both the petrol and the diesel engines today and we find that they're both capable engines. It's a spacious car, it's got a nice interior, it's well equipped, but what it's really got going for it is the styling. That's what sets it apart in its segment. It's what makes it not just a sensible package, but a desirable Tata car too.